One of the biggest advantages of Spring Boot applications is that you can start it in your IDE directly by just running one main method in a single class. But that's not how it runs in a production environment. You don't have an IDE when an application runs in production. So how do you run a Spring Boot application using command line and without an IDE? In this tutorial, I'll show you how to do just that. If you've downloaded your project, the starter project from your Spring Initializer website, start.spring.io, you have an option of choosing between Maven and Gradle. Uh, they're very similar for the most part. I'm gonna assume that you've chosen Maven for this video, but for Gradle, it's kind of similar. When you choose Maven, what you get is this pom.xml file, which is the file descriptor, the project descriptor, which does a couple of things. It lets you download dependencies to other projects in the Spring ecosystem. And it also provides an ability for you to bundle this up as a jar file. Your Spring project, your Spring Boot project is gonna be bundled up as a jar file. And you can run the main class in the jar file like you would run any other Java jar file, okay? So that's what we're gonna be using. So there are a couple of things that you will notice in your pom.xml that you've downloaded. The first is your Maven descriptor, your Maven artifacts, which lets you run Maven commands in order to create a jar file. And second, if you were to scroll down here, notice this plugin section where it has this plugin specified Spring Boot Maven plugin. This is an alternative way for you to run Spring Boot applications using a Maven target. I will demonstrate both of them to you in this tutorial. You can pick whichever you prefer. Okay, so let's say you have got a Spring Initializer project like this. You've coded it, you're happy with the result, and now you're ready to deploy to production. How do you run this project in production, right? So how do you even package it to deploy to production? Well, I'm gonna use Maven here. Uh, I'm gonna open the command prompt. I'm opening the command prompt in the IDE, but you don't have to do this. You can open any command prompt. And uh, I happen to have Maven installed on my machine and I can verify that by running this command, but you don't need Maven. I'm gonna show you if you don't have Maven, I'll show you how to build this and run this without separately having Maven installed because everything kind of comes out of the box here. So I have Maven installed and now I'm going to run the standard Maven build command or the Maven install command for Maven to take my Spring Boot project and generate a Maven artifact out of it, okay? The Maven artifact that gets generated is gonna be a jar file. Okay, so I'm gonna run this command, have it download all the dependencies and create a final jar file out of my Spring Boot project. Now here you'll notice that uh, there is a target folder that's created along with the SRC folder. Uh, let me actually open this in. And here you see the SRC is where your source code is. And now here is your target folder, which is what the Maven install command generated. And here's the jar file that it has generated. This jar file is what we're gonna be using to run our Spring Boot project. Now, what is in this jar file? Now, not only does this jar file contain the compiled sources from your Spring Boot project, it also contains all the necessary things for it to run. For example, it has Tomcat built in, okay? So you don't have to get this into a Tomcat container, you know, get that separately, have that running, and then deploy this. Uh, people used to do that as a war file earlier, but we don't need to do this in this case. Spring Boot, jar files are what is, ref what is referred to as fat jars, okay? So they contain not only your application compiled down, but it also contains all the things that it needs to run, all the dependencies that it needs to run. And it just, it's right there. So all you need to do is just run this jar file. Okay, so I'm gonna change directory to my target location. And here is the jar file that I have generated by the Maven command. How do I run this jar file? I run this by using the java-jar command, okay? The java-jar takes in the name of the jar file as the next argument, and then it just runs the main class and the main method in that jar file, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do here. And as you can see, you have Tomcat up and running. This is it. This is a fully functional web container that hosts your Spring application. So this is very useful. So it's kind of similar to running your main 
class using an IDE. But in this case, what you can do is you can create this jar file or maybe have your CI CD pipeline create the jar file and then hand this off to somebody who is deploying this. It could also be an automated process which deploys this jar file somewhere and then has one command to run this instance. This is very handy in the case of microservices where you have a whole lot of hosts and a whole lot of instances. You don't want to be managing all those different Tomcat instances for every host. Just having it all self-contained inside the jar file makes it very simple. There are a couple more things you should know, uh, which is that when you download the project from uh, start.spring.io, what you get along with your template source are these two Maven command files. Okay, so you have mvnw.command and mvnw. So these are wrappers for Maven that let you run Maven even if you don't have it installed on your machine. So you know what? If you're running Spring Boot projects, you don't even need Maven installed on your machine. You can just run these wrapper files and they pretty much take the place of a Maven command. So you can essentially run dot slash Maven wrapper install and then it's gonna install pretty much the same way as I did before by having my own Maven installation. This is also super handy because you have the Maven wrapper also included in the source. So if you have something like a CI CD pipeline where you have build machines which run build across multiple different projects and across multiple different nodes, they all run off of the same Maven version because that's checked into your source code. That's, that's another advantage that you get here. Okay, we've seen a couple of different ways to run your Spring Boot project from the command line, and uh, they all require you to run a build and then run the jar file. Uh, there is another way in which you can run this using your source directory itself, and that is by using the Spring target. So I told you that there is a Spring Boot Maven plugin that is a part of your pom.xml. So that creates the Spring Boot colon run target in your Maven lifecycle. So you can run Maven Spring Boot colon run, and that runs your Spring application just like uh, all of the other methods that we've seen so far. But this time we are not, we don't have to create a jar file and run that. We are running it directly off of the source. So this is yet another way in which you can run your Spring Boot projects from the command line.